Hi guys, Jan here. In today's 3D quick tip video, we will talk about axis orientation, which is crucial to master if you want to do proper modeling because you are reorienting your axis all the time. I will be also using few of the features I showed you in the previous video like snaps so definitely check it out I will link it over here and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe I have weekly updates and tons of stuff to come in the future without further ado uh, let's start first of all let me just display pivot points for both of these objects so we know what's going on and we will start with the move tool. Let's just double click and also open the model toolkit. The axis orientation could be found in here in the tool settings or in here in the modeling toolkit or in the marking menu when you hold W, E or R for move, rotate and scale and the left mouse button. So the same thing is here same thing is up here and same thing is up here. I prefer to use marking menus and you should definitely start to learn the marking menus because it, that's the fastest way to operate with Maya and the most convenient. So I will be using marking menus for the rest of the video but I will keep these two open so you see what's changing where. The first axis orientation is the world and as it says it's just oriented with the world axis. So if we just rotate this torus and go back to move, you see that it's still oriented with the world. It's still the same, even though our rotation axis of the torus is different. That's useful when I want to move it along the axis. If I want to, let's say, align it just roughly with a cube over here, but what if I want to move it in this direction exactly aligned with the rotation axis of the object? That's super easy. It's just holding the W and the left click for the marking menu and choosing the object orientation. And you see that it's automatically snapped to the pivot point. So right now I can exactly move the object within its pivot orientation. So that was a world and object orientation. These two are the simplest ones. However, let me just show you one little trick with the move tool I use all the time. And that's the middle mouse button and drag. If I want to move that this object, I can just click whatever axis or just the square in the middle and just move it over here but I don't have to click them at all. I just can be over here in the scene or anywhere and just hold the middle mouse button and move and it will do the same thing. Right now it's moving in the screen space. So it's just following the virtual plane aligned to the camera. But let's say I want to move it in the Z axis to the left. I can just hold the shift and middle mouse button and move the mouse into the direction of the z-axis and it will automatically snap. The same for the x-axis to the front and the same for the y. So if I hold shift, middle mouse button and move up, it will snap to the y-axis. This is particularly great when you are actually not seeing the object. So I select the torus, I don't know where it is, let's say, and I want to move it into a scene and I know that it's a Z direction. I can hold shift and middle mouse button and just move into the direction and I'm snapped. And there is one more, even more powerful move and that's with snapping. I told you about snapping in a previous video. If you hold V for the vertex snap, you can see here and just hover over and middle click this vertex the torus will snap into place. It doesn't have to be in the view at all. So the middle mouse drag with shift or even without is very, very powerful tool for moving objects around. Let's get back to axis orientation. The next on the list is component mode, which is very simple, but 
super useful and I use it all the time. When you are in the object selection, it doesn't do anything. However, if you are in component selection, like faces, vertices, or edges, you see that that axis is reorienting itself based on a selection. It's not following the object orientation or the world orientation. It's based on the component normal. Or if you have more components selected, it does the average. This is super useful for modeling. Then we have a parent orientation, which is kind of a self-explanatory. Let me, let's say, oh, just rotate this cube and parent the torus under the cube. And right now, um, let's say using the object orientation and it's still oriented based on a torus but what if i want to move it in the orientation space of a cube i can just go into martigi menu and as parent is not that much used you cannot find it here you will find it in the axis and the parent and right now the axis if i display the wireframe the axis in the torus is now matching the axis in a cube so it's matching the axis of its parent. Let's just reverse everything back to normal. And the next one is actually called normal, which I was using all the time until the one feature was added to Maya, but I will show you what's going on. The normal orientation works just with the vertex selection. So if I select the vertex and go to axis and normal, you see quite a brand new gizmo. This U and V are for handling curves, but we can talk about it in the later videos. However, the normal is right now moving the vertex along the normal which is not useful when you are moving one vertex because you can use the component but if you are moving multiple vertices and switch to component it's orienting the axis based on the last selected component but what i want is to move every one in the normal so i go to normal and move it with the normal with this, you can easily like inflate or deflate or change the thickness of your meshes. But right now, what was added to Maya is the normal translation into the normal gizmo. So it doesn't actually matter in which axis orientation are you in. If you want to move your vertices or whatever based on normal, you just have to hold control or command and middle drag and it will automatically move that selection along the normal it doesn't work just with vertices that's the best feature because the normal axis orientation works just with vertices but this doesn't so if i select the ring of polygons like this one let's say and go to whatever move in control and middle drag i can just inflate and deflate and move even the vertices even edges and even polygons. So that's way better than using the normal axis orientation. And right now we are getting to one of the best axis orientations and that's custom. And we can find it over here. The custom could be set to a different orientations. Let's start with a set to object. If I choose a set to object, it will ask me which object I want the axis to be oriented to. Right now, these are both world oriented. So let me rotate the cube a bit and go to axis custom set to object and set it to the cube. And you see that the torus is now matching the orientation of the cube. That's very, very useful when you are doing some, let's say, architecture modeling and you have to match the orientation and move all your meshes in the same space or all the vertices in the same space according to the this one. The same goes 
for the orientation based on component. It will orient that pivot point based on a component you choose on the object itself. So if I click this vertex, you see that it was reoriented based on that vertex and I can move the entire mesh based on that one component. Let's say if I just extrude this face and I want to move my entire thing based on that face, like in the direction of this extrusion. So what I will do is go to axis custom set to component and click the polygon and my entire thing is oriented to that polygon and I can move it in that way. And then we have orientation to point or to edge. That's these three are the same as the set to component. Let's reset that. There is actually a way better option than to going every time to this menu. And that's a holding D key. And if you press and hold, you see that the snapping was turned on and you have a little align label around your cursor. And whenever I click right now, even if it's the edge point or a polygon, it will immediately snap that pivot into that place and reorient it. So if I click this one right now, we can move it in that way. That's super, super useful. I use it all the time for modeling. Let's say I'm here. I move, want to move that vertex along this edge. I just click this edge and move the vertex over there. I want to move it over there. I just click that edge with the D button selected and move it over there. If I want to reset that, I just click outside of the object and it will reset it to the world orientation again. There is also a marking menu associated with the D key. When you hold D and press the right mouse button, you see a bunch of options like that you want to change the pivot orientation when you are snapping, you want to change the position, you can turn them off and on if you want, you can reset the orientation, reset the position or reset the entire pivot as we did by clicking somewhere else. There is one a bit not annoying but it's a feature if i let's say orient the pivot to this polygon it stays there until i select something else so if i select the different vertex it will be reset and it could be a bit annoying and a bit frustrating there is however a solution for that let's say i align the pivot to this polygon right now and by holding d and the right click i can choose a pin component pivot whatever I select, the pivot just stays in the place. But this is just a component pivot. You see that the one we actually snapped into the face is still here. If you want to reset the custom pivot, we can just press the reset over here or just add, press the edit, which is the same thing as pressing the D key and moving it somewhere else. Or just resetting the pivot into the center of the mass of the thing. So that's it guys, the axis orientation is pretty basic topic but there are few hidden tips and tricks I showed you like the marking menu, like the D key with the right click or the middle mouse drag to follow the axis. So thanks a lot for watching the video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do and follow me on social media and see you next time.